One to Buckeye Football Weekly facing yet another spread offense against the Purdue Boilermakers, but this one a little bit different than the other spread offenses. They, they call it that basketball on grass, and they, they run those different routes and everything else. I'll tell you what, they get rid of the ball in a hurry. Their goal is to have it thrown within 1.5 seconds, and that's tough to get pressure on the quarterback that way. They had been running and had a little more balance in their attack, although I, th I think our defense did a good job when all was said and done uh, handling the run pretty well. But they threw the ball in there and had some quick hitting throws throws and made it hard for us to get pressure. Over 400 yards against Northwestern on the ground. Was there any thought that they may try to stick with that ground game? With, with two weeks off, they had the bye week. Again, you get a team with a bye week coming in. Well, they were still going to be playing against our defense, and yeah. I don't think you can just flat out only run against our people. And so I, I'm sure as they studied us, they watched people uh, have a tough time running, and, and they were going to lead with the pass. Near sellout crowd on hand at Ross Aid Stadium and a defensive struggle. Not a lot of points being put on the board. Did you foresee such a defensive battle? Well, I knew how good their defense was, and I thought our defense is pretty darn good. And, and here you see them swarming around the ball, Timmy Anderson and Donnie Nicky. And I think they only ended up uh, rushing for 54 yards. And here's a big pick by Dustin Fox. You know, whenever you can shut them down in the red zone and get the ball back with zero points scored, that's huge. Red zone interception there. Joey Harris with the first play, just the pickup of two. And then Buckeyes take the ball back in a 20-yard pickup. Michael Jenkins. Good job. Michael pushed him off well. And, and uh, you know, we wanted to push him off deep and see if we could hit underneath him early coming out. And here you see Maurice Claret cutting through there. And, and uh, uh, he ended up, I think, with 50-some yards, but got dinged a little bit on that uh, uh, on that shoulder again, that's just a, a tough injury. Eight yard pickup there for Maurice Corrette. Back goes Purdue on offense as the Buckeye drive would stall. Well, again, you see Tim Anderson and C. Grant and Matt Wilhelm and Will Smith uh, doing a good job holding down their run game. Same thing here. You see Chris Gamble, they tried a fourth down. Uh, I think that was a fourth down attempt, and Chris stopped it on the toss sweep. They, like Minnesota, tried to make Chris Gamble tackle, and again, he did the good job. Here you see Ben Hartsock catching a good uh, first down conversion and uh, Craig Krenzel throwing the ball in there. And it was, a, it was a tricky win day to throw the football. Nice pickup of eight on a third and six play and then a tipped pass. This is unfortunate. Drops into Nico Kudavidi's hands. Well, you know, you can't turn the football over. Good tackle there by Craig, but uh, the ball was above the numbers. We always say those in-breaking routes have to be at the numbers or lower. It was above the numbers and it gave them a chance to go down. But our defense held tough and held them to three after a difficult field position start. Very important with that quick change. 21-yard field goal good from Baron Lasevich, and it's three to nothing, Purdue. Here you see Craig going back again and finds a, a heck of a good catch there by Chris Gamble. They broke on the ball pretty well, but I tell you what, Chris makes plays on both sides of the football. Certainly does. A pickup of 22 on the play, and that pass into the wind. I'm sorry, with the wind for the Buckeyes, throwing with it at their back right now. As we go to second quarter action now, once again, it is up top. 18-yard pickup, Craig Krenzel to, gam to gamble again. Good job stepping up, and, and uh, Chris made one of those uh, tightrope catches over there, and, and he's an extraordinary athlete, and he just makes play after play. Tough not to give him that call right in front of your bench. Then Maurice Claret around the right side. Good job. It was just a little zone play, and, and he saw the, that uh, they were playing the inside gaps, and he slid it outside and got us down to a short yardage situation. Here you see a good look in conversion uh, over there to Michael Jenkins. Michael's been steady, really, for every one of these 11 games. A little bit of a draw play there. Maurice Claret finds some running room, and you, know, you can just see that he's, he doesn't finish his plays like he does when he's healthy, and he's doing his best, and he's all taped up, and he's in a lot of pain, and uh, he wants to help this football team, but it's, it's tough duty when you're banged. Tastes some of that win. 10-yard pickup. That drive stalled, and back to pass, Kyle Orton. Big play, Matt Wilhelm dives in front, and we came up with three takeaways, which uh, in a seesaw game like this, uh, that's huge, and it gives us a chance to move down the field. Krenzel doesn't find a receiver here, so he takes off downfield. 15-yard pickup. Well, that, that's huge for Craig, and he does a great job making decisions, stepping up. In fact, you'll see that the last play of the game, he steps up real well to throw the winning touchdown here. We had to hustle on to... Uh, to hit this field goal and a really good job by our guys being ready 
Uh, at the end of the half, I think we had about 12 seconds where we had to scramble on the field and get that thing snapped, and it got snapped with about two seconds to spare, and Mike Nugent hits whatever, number 21 yeah. or whatever number yeah. that is for him. And that was just a, an absolute fire drill down the stretch there. You practice that? Well, yeah, we do. We practice running on the field quite a bit. Uh, we really didn't expect to have to do that. We were down on about the seven or the eight, and, and uh, Craig Krenzel was either, either going to throw it for a touchdown or throw it away, and he just saw everything in front of him open. He thought, you know, I can score seven. Forget throwing it away because the receivers aren't open. Uh, and he got surprised by a guy in the one, but our guys were right there, and, and uh, uh, you know, to their credit, went and executed and made the three-pointer. You know, managed the clock with half the field there, and uh, no worries. I mean, that didn't work out exactly like you wanted. You would have loved to have stopped the clock, but all in all, pretty good clock management. Well, that was pretty. It ended up that way. If we would have yeah. ended up uh, well, right. sitting there on the half-yard line, we wouldn't have been happy. But uh, uh, we moved it down pretty well. We hit some key passes. Our pass protection was solid. Craig did some stepping up, and that was good going into the halftime uh, to get that rolling. We're locked at three. A battle at Ross Aid Stadium. We're back. Now, field position always important in any football game, even more so with the wind and in a tight battle. Well, no doubt. In fact, we had had some discussions as to should we take going into the win in the third quarter so that we'll have it in the fourth uh, and give them the ball another possession. Uh, as good as their offense was uh, with them being able to take over if we kick into the wind with maybe good field position, we decided not to. We decided to take the football and see if we could establish uh, field position ourselves. Not willing to trade that one possession for the field position just at this point as we start off. Craig Krenzel at quarterback. Good looking play there. Uh, Maurice Claret bends back a little bit of a, of a lead play there and, and uh, we came out and I thought had a couple or three pretty decent runs in there but we got stalled ended up having to punt it down but uh, punted it down uh, so they were starting 80 yards from the goal line. This that two-step drop out of the shotgun a pick up a three for John Standerford but that 1.5 seconds the ball's off. Uh, it's hard to get to him and, and our guys came up and tackled pretty well here's a little bit of a quarterback boot keeper and and Rob Reynolds is there and Chris Gamble's there and and uh, they're going after him. Now Brandon Kirsch in at quarterback. He didn't play in the first half. He started the second half, and he offers a little bit of a different look. Yeah, he does, and they had a little unbalanced set that we hadn't seen that they tried to, to do a little bit of toss sweep out of. Plus, they were going to run him, Brandon Kirsch a little bit, and uh, so they gave us, gave us some different looks to come out that second half. Here you see he's got pretty good time until Darian Scott comes around the corner, and he didn't get it thrown in that 1.5, and that was our one sack for the day. You could certainly tell the difference when there was a little bit of coverage downfield or when they were trying to get the ball downfield that uh, things wouldn't go their way in the pocket, and then special teams again steps up. Big punt block, Michael Jenkins, uh, great job on the punt block. Uh, Mark Snyder designs that for our Ranger punt block unit, and that gave us great field position, and we didn't cash in, but again, we did keep them down their end of the field, and Andy Groom hits it down, and, and uh, we've got them starting from inside their 10-yard line. And again, in a field position battle game, you know, that's what you have to do if you can't go down and score. Those pooch kicks are crucial, and he had the wind at his back there, but they're still tricky, even with the wind at your back. You just can't go and bang them, and that's Mike Doss with the tackle on the punt, and then Robert Reynolds steps up, everybody getting a piece of Simon Frazier's in there, and David Thompson, and, and uh, again, they had a hard time establishing a consistent run against us. Kirsch again, still at quarterback. The scrambler. He's pulled down this time, lost a six on this play. He can move around, and this was just a quarterback designed run, and Matt Wilhelm's in there, and Rob Reynolds was the one that stopped the thing from happening, and, and uh, actually he fumbled the football, uh, which was key back there, and, and, uh, but they did come up with it, and they banged the ball through. Lisevich with the field goal, 32 yards out, six to three. Just three field goals so far in this game. Back on offense for the Buckeyes, first and 10 from the 31. Big play there to Mike Jenkins and good pass protection. The key every time you see Craig throwing one in there good, you can be sure that it's probably good pass protection. Here he takes a short drop, steps up a little bit, finds Bam Childress for a short one across there. Well, now we're across the 50-yard line and have a chance to move into their territory. Midfield pickup of seven for the Bucks. Ended up punting the ball down, but again, we had a good uh, punt placement, and we've got them starting back on their own 10-yard line. There's C. Grant. There's Kenny Peterson. Uh, I think that was Simon Frazier underneath there. Here they are trying to run it again. Kenny Peterson again, Timmy Anderson, uh, and again, they, they're not going to run against our defense. Last drive of the game, Ohio State with the ball. It's third and 14 at midfield. Here he steps up, and again, 
Good job by Ben Hartsock, and now we're going to be down to a fourth and two situation. Again, good protection, stepping up with the football. Uh, the same thing you'll see here. Uh, we had a basic play called there, Ben, to get Ben for the first down, but he was covered man to man, so he went to the next thing, and that was Mike Jenkins on the post, and that was huge. Michael Jenkins keeps the dream alive, you might want to say, for the Buckeyes there. The touchdown. <laughs> and, and Jennifer in the and game. Jennifer, yeah. our student secretary, uh, is at the game, I guess. Yeah. And then here you see Mike Dugan. How about that? Kicking off into the end zone against that wind. That was a huge kickoff. Fantastic job. 10 6 at this point. One last shot. You didn't want any repeats of 2000. You know everyone remembers that. Here they threw it up, and Chris Gamble, I tell you what, he's everywhere. and gets it done and and uh, the neat thing about the ensuing drive for us is we ran two straight quarterback sneaks and got a first because we couldn't burn it out by just taking a knee. Craig got himself two quarterback nice. sneaks and and uh, here we come up with a Big Ten win. Joe Tiller with two weeks to work with you know you're going to get something from them and they were uh, every bit as tough as advertised and this was uh, this was right down to the wire as everyone saw. They're a good football team they have an excellent defense one of the top defenses uh, in the Big Ten in my opinion uh, offensively they give you a lot of problems they can move the ball down the field the red zone is a little tougher for those spread teams and our defense really raised up in the red zone but uh, I thought our special teams played solid uh, guys came up and made plays when they had to and and that's the way you come away with a Big Ten win on the road you come away with a feeling that uh, somebody's watching over this team I mean 11 and 0 it's just the fourth Ohio State team to ever record an 11 and 0 record and we're only about halfway through the season yeah it seems yeah, like we're, you know we're we got down the back side of it right we now. got a little ways <laughs> to go I know this uh, when you prepare hard like our players do, when you work hard like our coaches do, sometimes the ball does bounce your way. Uh, but uh, I think it's a lot more because of the good hard work than it is uh, just good fortune, although we'll keep that good fortune going. Is, is destiny a word that you, that yeah, you throw I don't know about destiny. It's only something you talk about after it's all over. <laughs> Well, it's not over yet, and uh, neither is uh, the celebration for this one. The guys will feel good about themselves, and then they'll get right back to work. And the proof is in what goes on each and every week around college football, Oklahoma dropping from the unbeaten ranks. Tell you what, there are lots of good teams. We're playing one of them next weekend, Illinois, the defending Big Ten champions. So the kids, as they get back to work, in this week. It's another road game uh, that you'll talk about and another tough test as you go and, and that's it really, right? End of story. They just beat up on Wisconsin pretty good at Camp Randall if I'm not mistaken. So you know Illinois is getting better and better and better. Plenty more on this edition of Buckeye Football Weekly. Stay right